What's up y'all and welcome to the channel. If you're looking to take that next step and get some additional equipment, today I'm gonna walk you through my simple deep space astrophotography setup. So most obviously you're going to need a camera and some sort of lens. And so my go-to is typically the Sony body. And here I have the Sony a7R4 and it's paired with the Sony 70 to 210 uh, G Master lens, which is so fast. It's an f 2.8 Brilliantly sharp and on top of my camera here. You'll notice this little attachment So this here is a remote intervalometer so I can control the camera from a remote without having to touch it as I'm shooting The next piece of gear is going to be a sturdy tripod and depending on how much weight you're gonna put on it Even this right here is not sturdy enough So I would recommend a beefy tripod if you're putting weight on top of this like I have with my Sony setup. This is the type of tripod I'm talking about. Something really sturdy. This brand in particular is a Gitzo carbon fiber tripod. It is really heavy duty. If you're doing deep space, that's something like that. Right, Georgia? Let's talk about star trackers. Now, essentially what star trackers are meant to do is to allow you to take longer exposures. So your camera is moving at the same rate as the Earth's rotation, so you don't get star trailing images like this. Now, star trackers come in a lot of variety, shapes, and sizes, but this Skywatcher Adventure is a very affordable way to step into tracking, um, not only for deep space, but this is a phenomenal tool for landscape astrophotographers as well. With the actual tracker itself, you'll notice it's on what's called an equatorial mount. And what this does is depending on your latitude in the world, we can adjust our azimuth north and south in order to properly align with the North Star, which is how we're going to do our polar alignment in just a bit. Now the next piece is this heavy counterweight right here. And I choose to use this setup because again, my camera and lens are pretty heavy and we're gonna walk you through balancing this setup in just here in a second. But essentially this is an option of, you know, a dovetail plate that you can then either put your camera directly on the top here. But in my case, I prefer to have this ball head. So it's actually the spare ball head for this tripod where I have a lot more flexibility of where I'm pointing my camera. Now we've covered pretty much the gear that we're gonna use tonight. Let's talk about some important next steps. So some key considerations are before you start shooting, pick out what is your object going to be in the sky. And based off that, i.e. where I'm at in my backyard, ensure that you have clear visibility away from trees or buildings as your celestial object is going to move through the sky at night. On top of that, choosing where you set your tripod up is, is a very nice thing to keep in consideration because not only do we want our physical tripod to be nice and level, but there's also an additional bubble ball level on the, tr the tracker itself that we wanna ensure that everything is nice and level. So when we polar align, we're completely in sync with the Earth's rotation. A random note, if you are shooting with a lens like my Sony here, do note that if it has optical stabilization, we wanna make sure that that is turned off because essentially we don't want the lens to be fighting us as it's moving on the tracker. So when we think about tripod placement as well, it's also important to generally orient the front of our tracker, which is going to be this side. So this is where we're able to look through the oculus and see our stars. Cause I know in my backyard, north is roughly in this direction. I'm gonna start my leveling process by generally orienting my camera to the north. An additional thing to note is I've actually been out shooting with people who accidentally had the tracker on south, which that means the southern hemisphere. And so they essentially were turning in the wrong direction. So if you live in the northern hemisphere, be sure this is turned to north. Now that we've picked our tripod location, we've got our, we've got our gear all set up. The next step is to actually balance the camera on the star tracker. So again, that's why we have this nice counterweight to help us counterbalance the weight of our camera. Be very careful during this step because I've almost had a heart attack a couple times. But the balancing act of this whole setup is just that, a bit of a balancing act. 
So know that you can slide the dovetail upwards and downwards to help counteract the weight. But in a dream world, as your camera is roughly oriented to where you want it to be, when you open this up, essentially when you rotate it left to right, you want the camera to roughly stay equal or even on both sides of the tracker. So in this case, it looks like I'm roughly level and ready to go for tonight. Another pro tip of having tripods and shooting astrophotography, I like to put glow in the dark tape on my legs. So as you're moving around, whenever the sun goes down, you minimize your risk of actually kicking the legs of the tripod. Let's talk about polar aligning. This is arguably one of the most difficult parts of getting your deep space set up with a unit like the Sky Watcher Pro here. Something that I've learned that helps make the process a little bit easier is doing your alignment shortly after sunset. So you can see the light is quickly fading and what I, what I try to do is find the North Star because it's typically going to poke first brighter than all the other stars. So polar aligning early and having less stars to sort of distract in your oculus makes the alignment process just a little bit easier. So now that we've roughly found Polaris and it's almost in our oculus. So there you can see I've got the North Star in the middle. What we need to do is open our Polar Utility app. So with the SA console, there's an app called the SA console app. And so what you do is click on Polar Utility and based on where you're located currently, it will give you this black dot on the dial. So down here, that tells you where you need to get the North Star aligned within uh, your Oculus here. So almost six o'clock right now on the, on the dial. So the great thing too, it's not like the best, but the Skywatcher has lateral micro adjustments. So left and right, so you can twist these little things and it also has azimuth, so up and down with this um, at the front there. So there you can see, I'm nice and centered right at the six o'clock line. The next critical step is once you focus in on the area of the sky you wanna photograph, it's getting your stars in focus. So for this particular lens setup, I've got it set to manual focus and essentially what I'm gonna to have to do is focus on the brightest star. And from there, rock back and forth until it's nice and pinpoint. And then what we'll do is take a test shot. Always take a test shot. because you still have to eat. Jank and grill. But you know what? It ain't broke. Da, da, da! <laughs> A heart attack every single time. Also, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm in shorts. Short sleeves. It's February 6th in Central Texas and it's 81 degrees. Can't beat that. Cooper buildings. Can I help you? Give me that. 